my darling companion uh, about these uh, handkerchiefs. And that thing's as big as a bed sheet. You know? <laughs> and I, it just don't know me why I cry so much. So she's very considerate. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. But a pacifier's not a satisfier. <clears throat> a well-to-do family in a big, nice house. But a pacifier's not a satisfier. Your T-ball team won number one. Playing ball was always fun. The hometown crowd was proud and loud. You were a favorite son. But a pacifier's not a satisfier. You went on to make high school who's who. All your classmates looked up to you. You even made valedictorian. Got a standing ovation at graduation that night in the Golden Eagle Auditorium. Mama and them were proud as you took your bow. But a pacifier's not a satisfier. Pacifier's not a satisfier. Pacifier's not a satisfier. How many heartbreaks does it take before we realize? Pacifier's not a satisfier. You went on and earned your college degrees, MBAs and a PhDs. Revered by your peers and your family, Mama and them was especially proud as you took another bow. But a pacifier's not a satisfier. We all agreed that you had good luck. You made yourself about a billion bucks. The more you got, the more you thought you'd need. The boa constrictor's name is greed. And a pacifier's not a satisfier. You went on head five wives, as all beauty queens. But they got old and you got mean. That romantic dream is an expensive thing. You came to realize that a pacifier's not a satisfier. Then he was born, your pride and joy, daddy's little man and mama's little boy. The year he turned six, he got sick and passed away. You blame God, too angry to pray. Pacifier's not a satisfier. Pacifier's not a satisfier. Pacifier's not a satisfier. How many heartbreaks does it take before we realize a pacifier's not a satisfier? Now it's your time to die. The years flew by. You look back and wonder why. You were pacified but never satisfied. And you see a bright light shining through a blood-soaked cross. And for the first time you realize what loving you cost. And then you hear a familiar voice calling out for you. daddy's little man running to greet you. 
and welcome you home. And now you know you've never been alone and welcome you home. And now you know we never die at last, forever and ever satisfied. Pacifier is not a satisfier. Pacifier is not a satisfier. How many heartbreaks does it take before we realize other gods before Him are pacifiers and will never satisfy. They didn't know why Noah wasn't impressed by their fun and games. A weird old fool so uncool until the rain came. Noah obeyed and he saved us from that dreadful flood. He gave up the love of life in exchange for a life of love. Moses could have enjoyed the passing pleasure of sin until he heard the Lord calling out for him. Forty years in the desert learning not to push and not to shove. He gave up the love of earthly life in exchange for a life of love. Teresa wasn't at all impressed with this world's headlines. Among the diseased and the dying was where her light shined. Jesus was the hand. Teresa was his glove. She gave up the love of life in exchange for a life of love. He came for his own his own despised him. He bled and died on a rugged cross to save us from our sin. Jesus went through hell below to take us to heaven above. He gave up the love of earthly life in exchange for a life of love. Whatever you possess down here, you will one day give up. Will you go down to the grave, clinging to your stuff? Or will you surrender all in the arms of love? Will you give up the love of earthly life in exchange for a life of love? You give up the love of life in exchange for a life of love. Will you let go of everything this world is made up of? Or will you go down to the grave of clinging to your stuff? Will you give up the love of life in exchange for a life of love? Oh God, I don't know how to have other gods before you. I try and I try and I try, but all these worldly pleasures, even wholesome moral things, take all my attention. And I go through a life filled with shame because I have so many gods before you. He will never, ever tell us what to do without showing us how to do it. And if you are willing to have no other gods before Him, He'll do the rest. My heart's been broken by the burden of betraying. The only one who ever loved me enough to die. 
I know I deserve your judgment, Lord, for being so untrue. And then he smiles. says, come here, child. No matter what you have done, no matter what you do, you'll never keep me from loving you. I even tried to talk him out of loving me. But he just wouldn't listen. He wouldn't pay me no mind. I even tried to talk him out of loving me. He said, child, stop wasting our time. Now what you gonna do with a love like that? Lord, into your arms I fall. Suffering love held nothing back. Oh, take this wretched soul, my God, I surrender all. I, I even tried to talk him out of loving me, but he just wouldn't listen. He wouldn't pay me no mind. I even tried to talk him out of loving me. He said, child, stop wasting our time. So I finally stopped wasting our time. Harold Wallace, remember, Harold Wallace was before Roy days. How many of you remember Harold? Come on. Our roots run deep, don't they? Harold poured his life into me on Saturdays when he heard that I wrote songs and I, uh, music is my life, it's not my livelihood. I've always given everything away and always will. But Harold, when I was hiding in the closet writing songs, Harold heard and brought me out and every Saturday he would meet me here and just pour his life in, into me and encourage me. And, and I remember the first time he said, you're ready, ready for what? Sunday night, you're going to sing at the church. It scared me to death. I didn't sleep the night before. And I, you know, anyway, Harold. Harold said one of his pet peeves was a song that ended on a minor chord. And if you'll notice, I just did that. That's for you, Harold. <laughs> well, there was a There's been a number of heroes a part of this church family. And I became a member of this church when I was in the fifth grade. And one of those heroes that came through to mentor me was tough and rugged. Spent over four years frontline military combat, World War II and the Korean War. And his son was stationed at Fort McClellan, Jim, who met Deborah here. Hi, Jim and Deborah there in French Lake watching us now. We love you. But Dow and Phoebe came through. How many of you remember Dow and Phoebe? Well, there's a memorial to him. And some of you, I know all of you have seen it, but... Uh, there's an automatic chair on the steps right there that go into the sanctuary. And Brother Perry and some others, just out of compassion and love for Dow, saw the way he struggled. He walked on two canes with a neck brace in constant pain. So they built him that chair so he wouldn't have to climb those steps. And so they presented it to him. He said, Dow, this is for you to help you up those stairs. And you know what he said to him? You write it up. <laughs> he never got on it. And it's just sitting there to this day. Isn't it wonderful how we remember? And that's a reminder. 
Now here's what he did. I was so insecure and stubborn, all you know, and, and afraid. That's a good word, afraid. Afraid of messing up. And the songs kind of embarrassed me, you know. I would write them and share my heart, and every time I would seek the light and see some light, a song would always come out. But he was another encourager. And when he wasn't able to get up and walk and push himself, he'd lay in bed and listen to cassette tapes of songs I've written. I made just for him. And he had ears to hear. And he was such an incredible encouragement to me. Now here's what he would do. I was struggling deeply with Luke chapter 14, verse 33, where Jesus says, if you're going to be my disciple, now listen, you know in John 8, disciples are free. Free from worry, fear, anxiety, turmoil, depression, all that addiction, everything that we're so prone to get wrapped up in. A disciple's free and he said, to be free, Luke 14, 33, you got to give up all your possessions. But what really bothered me was on up in that chapter in verse 26, he says, if you're going to be my disciple, you got to hate your father, mother, brother, sister, sons and daughters, and even your own life in comparison to your love for me. I tried for years to pretend that wasn't there. Now what Dow would do, occasionally, you never knew when it was coming. In church, he would slip me a piece of notebook paper, torn. And the writing was one of those lead pencils that was worn, kind of flat looking. And he'd hand it to me and I'd go home and I would read it. And I was working, I was writing this song. Oh, by the way, I had the honor of, of sharing at his uh, funeral in 2012. And we were up in French Lick and three months before for Phoebe's funeral. And you know, if, uh, whatever the occasion was in your life, you always got a card from her. And anytime that you had a, any one of us had a birthday, you get a call from Dow and Phoebe and they sing happy birthday to you over the phone. And how many of you in here have had Dow and Phoebe sing happy birthday to you? <laughs> anyway, I'm struggling with those verses in Luke 14. And Dow hands me that piece of paper and I go home and it's the bridge to this song that gives you the how to and the what you know you ought to do. You tell me to go and sell everything I own. Then proceed to give all the proceeds to the poor widows and the orphans. That can't be right. It's got to be wrong. Surely God understands I'm only human. I'm not that strong. You tell me that I gotta hate my father and mother, my sister and my brother. In comparison to my love for you. That can't be right. It's got to be wrong. God, I hope you understand. I'm only human. I'm not that strong. Here's Dow's note. Run and do the law commands. 
but gives me neither feet nor hands. The greater news the gospel brings bids me fly, then gives me wings. Perfect in me what you created me to be. Give me eyes to see your son in me. Now that sounds right. And I've been so wrong. I'm beginning to understand you're that strong. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. He's that strong. Now, uh, time for the bed sheet. <laughs> Excuse me. We were, before we came here, we were out in California. My daddy was pastoring a little church out there. And uh, my granddaddy was a pastor. I also wrote him a letter, and I found it. And he said, he said, Floyd, don't ever preach over 20 minutes. Bob Ford takes that to another level, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I remember that just out of consideration. So I'm, my 20 minutes is about up. But... Psalm 84, 5. He said, Blessed is a man whose trust is in God. And he says, You'll, that person, that man or woman, will pass through the valley of Baca. Baca means tears. And out of that person will flow rivers of living water what Jesus said, out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. And then he goes on to tell us in that psalm how to do it. And he said, when your strength is in God, it's because you set your heart on pilgrimage. You're not going to hold on to things. Whatever time brings your way, time's going to take it away. Friend, family, foe, come and go. Nothing here is here to stay. Our Lord said, you're straining on a gnat and swallowing a camel the way you've been living your life making something out of nothing and nothing out of something. How blind can we be living in a panic, spitting the Atlantic? We take ourselves way too seriously. He said, you set your heart on pilgrimage and you don't hold on to pacifiers, other gods before him that will never satisfy you. And you're discovering that your citizenship is in heaven, not planet earth. Boy, now just, as you study Moses and the responsibilities he had and his prayer life was deep, deep, deep. And he, you know, and he, he said, his prayer is Psalm 90. He said, he said, God teach me to number my days that I may gain a heart of wisdom, pilgrim. A pilgrim makes no progress when he loses sight of home. When his soul is required his worldly desires abandon him, leaving him all alone. His wife and kids need a mountain moving faith. Instead, there's nothing they can hold on to. Looking back, they overlook the fact We're only passing through just passing through well don't even take time to stop and unpack your bag son you'll be home soon you just tell the folks how you finally found your salvation and keep walking in the truth Jesus is the truth. 
you're only passing through. His voice I heard as I read His Word. He said, Son, don't you stake no claims. All you need to own is an eternal home. And you got it, son, in Jesus' name. So don't start any long novels, nor bank on some retirement plan. Cause tonight, I might be calling you. Don't ever forget, you're not home yet. You're only passing through. You're only passing through. Well, finally, brethren, I shared this at Audrey's funeral a couple of weeks ago. I won't tell you about this song. It's the last one I'll leave you with. My brother-in-law, Patty's brother Bill, was very successful in life by the world's standards. And he hadn't made 50 yet. He's still in his 40s. And he got up one night about 2 a.m., started from the restroom and fell down dead. And I shared at his funeral in Houston and the next day, I was on an airplane to England to join Vic Jacobson. Hey, Vic. On a concert tour with a choir from South Africa. It's amazing. I never had time to grieve. And Bill and I were close. And it was on this concert tour in between the concerts when they were, you know, putting up the equipment, taking it down, moving to the next city. And it was in between that I grieved my friend, cried it out, my brother. That's over 20 years ago. He got set free from his body before Bethany was born and Bethany's 20. <laughs> so I wrote this to Bill, but it keeps coming back to me hundreds and hundreds of times. I've shared at three funerals in the last two weeks of dear people I loved and treasured. And this song keeps coming back. We were blessed so much to live with you. Our love was even better than I ever thought love could be. Watched you change through the sun and the rain, erasing all the lonely feelings that were haunting me. But you have somewhere to go, and I do too, so we move on to our separate destinies. And I'll let you go, my friend. I'll let you go, my friend. Knowing I'll see you again in our home above. And I'll let you go, my friend. And I'll let you go, my friend. Because true love is not a possessive kind of love. We've got to confess that we'll miss you. But love can't be possessive though we wish you were still here. But instead of blaming God, you're gone. We'll thank Him for the love we've known throughout the years. And we'll place this wreath upon your grave and let you go to the one who's calling you, the one you really belong to. 
we'll let you go, our friend. We'll let you go, our friend. Knowing we'll see you again in our home above. We'll let you go, our friend. We'll let you go, our friend. Because true love is not a possessive kind of love. I can't love you with a love of God that never fails until I love you enough to let go. And there's no way I can let go if I'm left with open arms. Enter the Lord Jesus Christ. He meets our legitimate need in an illegitimate way and all we're doing with the other pacifiers before him, all we're doing is trying to get our legitimate need met in an illegitimate way. And then you look at the cross and you realize he loves you as if you're his only child. He copyrighted your thumbprints to get that message to you. And he paid your sin debt and you're already clean by the word that he's spoken to you. And it honors him and it blesses him when you'll do one simple thing. This is how you get saved. It's not by what you do or don't do. You don't even get saved by praying a prayer. That's something you do. You can't do right to be right. You do right because you are right. You are right because he's making you right. He's making you right because you're letting him love you with a love that never fails. And now, you can love your loved one. With a purity and a blessedness that is life and life in abundance. Give yourself away the one you really belong to and that's between you and Him. Life is a solo flight. What are you going to do with Jesus? You're our family, and uh, Brother Mark, I think is his name, is coming to be your interim, interim pastor. I, uh, perhaps you're watching this, Mark, uh, but you'll be here two days a week uh, next year. That's so wonderful. I'm looking so forward to getting to know you as you get to know us. But I live here, and I'll be your tag team. I'll, I'll be assistant to the interim or whatever it is. If you need if there's emergencies, if there's crisis, if there's whatever there, whatever there is, this is our family and will forever be our family. And I'm here to serve you. So tag team or whatever it is, if you can't get over here fast enough or whatever it is, brother, I'm here to serve you by serving our family. Thank you for having me. This is me. 12 minutes. I think my 20 minutes is up.